was a wicked city given over to gross immorality. To act like a Corinthian was to be guilty of wholesale fornication, adultery, LGBTQ. Before we had the acronym, it was called Corinth. The temple of Aphrodite was there where they had a thousand prostitutes. That's the way you worshiped Aphrodite. You would go into the temple and participate in orgies, homosexual orgies, straight orgies, whatever. The Corinthians were wicked. They were immoral and they uh, lavished in their immorality. They were not ashamed of their immorality. It was the way they lived. It was as America is becoming. Today, from the White House down, immoral persons are praised. And righteous people are called bigots, homophobes, amen, racist, judgmental, and evil. Whereas perverts are called brave and honorable and loving. We're becoming like Corinth. A man gets admitted to the White House gallery to sit beside the First Lady of the United States, not because he was a great NBA player, because he wasn't great. He was horrible. Terrible player, seven feet tall and uh, averaged three points a game. At seven, man, let me tell you, I would have I I got all the rebounds. And uh, th uh, three points a game, uh, and, and, and one rebound, but he sits, or something of that nature, that low, and he sits with the first lady because while engaged to a woman, he comes out and tells her he's homosexual. That causes the president to honor him and seat him in the gallery to hear the State of the Union. Corinth. And it has silenced most black, some of you are uncomfortable, most black preachers because they don't want to offend Obama. I'm more concerned with offending God. I am often asked, Bishop Wooden, are you afraid that you're going to end up on the wrong side of history? My answer is always the same. I'm only interesting, interested in ending up on the God side of history. I want history to record that I agreed with God. If it gets me killed, I agree with God. If you leave me, I agree with God. You can take your human philosophies. I won't participate in them. Yeah, I know what the Bible says, but stop right there. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. See, when you, when you engage in that kind of stuff, you are saying, I know what God's truth is, and then you dismiss it. Explain it to him when you stand before him on that great getting up morning. You have to explain it to me, but you will have to explain to him 
for every word that men shall speak and every deed that's done in the body, the Bible says we will have to give an account. Paul goes to Corinth. He enters into this wicked city and found certain Jews. This is preach, teach Sunday. Now we're going to read the Bible, okay? If you love the Bible, you'll love this. If you don't love the Bible, you won't love this. So they get, they get, to, they get to Corinth and he found certain Jew, a Jew, a certain Jew, certain Jew's name, uh, Aquila, born in Pontos, lately come from Italy, and his wife, come from Rome, and his wife Priscilla, Aquila, and his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. Now, now uh, that, that were occasional outbreaks of anti-Semitism throughout the Roman Empire. So uh, the Romans never liked the Jews. And, uh, and one of the reasons they didn't was, uh, now the Jews didn't do anything to ingratiate themselves with the Romans either. When, and, and let me tell you why, and, and I actually admire the Jews for it. Um, uh, they, uh, they did very little to endear themselves to the, to the Gentile world because of their religious laws, their religious customs and their scruples, the way the Jews lived, it, always, it, it would always set them apart from the Gentiles. Judaism is a, is a distinguishing religion. The Judites didn't blend in, so they didn't blend in with the, the wickedness of the Roman Empire. As, as a matter of fact, the Jews and this, you know, they, 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 they put forth no effort to disguise their contempt for the way the Gentiles lived either. So they would treat the Gentiles like they were dogs and the Gentiles didn't like them. And so uh, from time to time, there would be an edict, just get rid of the Jews. Because see, the thing about the Jews was God's hand has always been on the Jewish race. And so the Jews prosper. Wherever they go, they prosper. God's hand is on them. You know, you, when they were in Germany, they prospered. Wherever they are, they're, they're prosperous people. And so they, when they would prosper, what, what, I, what I did like about them now, uh, when, as they would move up, they didn't become less Jewish. They held to who they were. It's amazing how many times as we move up the ladder, we become less Christian. When Oprah first started, we thought that we had a good Baptist sister with a talk show. She's gone from that. I mean, I remember the early days she quoted scripture. She's gone from that to her God is a female. The Lord is saying to the saints in corporate America, don't be ashamed of me. The Lord is saying to the saints uh, on the college campus, um, don't be ashamed of me. I'm the Lord. And by the way, God has no secret service. There's no secret service in the Lord. Everybody who knows the Lord, you have to come out. You have to tell somebody. Do you know, do you know your salvation is not consummated until you tell somebody? You got to believe in your heart, but confess with your mouth. You got to tell somebody. And you got to tell somebody other than him. You can't let the Lord save you and accept the Lord in private and then, oh, Lord, I just thank you for saving me. And then you tell no one. No, no, no. It doesn't come alive until you find somebody and tell them, I've been born again. I've met Jesus Christ. And, and that's what baptism is all about. It is a public display of a private conversion. Something happened on the inside and you show the world by being baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, and in Jesus' name. And you tell the world, I'm one of them. Oh yeah, he calls for us.
to stand with him. The Jews, as they moved up, they stayed Jewish. They did their thing. And, and Claudius got rid of them, said, look, I want them to leave Rome. And they made it hard for them to stay. So Punch, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, they sail from Italy. They sail southeast down to uh, the Isthmus where Corinth was. They by trade were tent makers. They, they had a, the Bible actually teaches that they, they, verse 3 speaks of their craft, that craft comes from a Greek word that gives us the English word technicians. See, every believer ought to be good at what they do. So they, they worked with their hands. They were, they, were, they were tent makers. They understood leather. Praise the Lord. They, good and safe. This is a novelty. Good and safe and hard working. Every believer who, who's, who's got it like the Bible says, work hard. Amen. And you take pride in your work. Amen. I was somewhere not long ago and a brother was talking. He says, don't judge me by what I do. Judge me by who I am. I didn't know there was a difference. Because <laughs> in my book, there is no difference. If you won't work, you're lazy. Try to fix it. Try to divide it. Try as you may. Oh no! Oh no! You gotta. You can't. You, you don't be offended when people walk up to you and say, "So, what is it that you do?" That's how you. That's that's, that's what that's what men want to know. What do you do? Amen. And, and I'm I'm leery of these folk who have mystery answers. Oh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I got to go. <laughs> so I'm talking to a drug dealer. So I got to go. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. Oh, here a little, there a little. Uh-uh, that works with scripture, not with a job. If you're between jobs, just say it. Laid off, say it. And then whatever, whatever it is that you do, you be proud of what you do and put pride in your work. I got to go talk to somebody tomorrow about something they did for me. And I'm going to tell you, there's no pride in this. Look at this. There's no pride in this. What is this? Oh, I, I, got a, I got a speech. There's no pride in this work. Aquila and Priscilla put pride in their work. They were tent makers. Amen. One writer said, do thy work and do, uh, do it diligently because uh, as you are working, if you do, you may meet a rare soul and have fellowship with them as Aquila and Priscilla did. While they were working hard, they met a rare soul. They met the mighty Apostle Paul, who also was a tent maker. So he gets to Corinth in this wicked city. He meets, he finds some Jews, and they had the same craft. All right? Do you see that? So verse 3 says, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. See, he worked. None of us are above work. None of us are above getting our hands dirty. Well, I'm the pastor. Okay, who you are? You, 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 look, you, you can't be above work. All preaching can't be in, in a setting with a mic and or air conditioning and everything laid out. You got to be able to preach on the street. Amen. And, and, and then when preaching don't pay the bill, get a job, a secular job. Praise the Lord. I'm just waiting for the Lord to make a way. And some of you guys calling, uh, Pastor, I'm in town. Can I come by? I said, sure. God bless so-and-so. He came by. I mean, you come by, but now if you ask me, can you preach? No, I've been studying, and I have a word. And I'm in a series this morning, and when I want you to preach, I'll call you. That's the way that works. I'll call you because uh, some of these guys, you know, if you let them, you'll hear a different speaker every Sunday. You don't like this, do you? They, were, they worked. They went to work. Paul was not allergic to work. Now, they just traveled 150 miles walking. He gets to Corinth. He finds these people, and he goes to work. Oh, my God. 
I'm almost, you know, you almost make you shame. I mean, my, this man was a, 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 like a wound up top. He just kept going. He's, you talk about energ energizer bunny. I was, if I could talk to him, I'd want to know, Paul, what, what, did, what did you drink? <laughs> what did you take? What was your energy? I, I know it's the Lord, but well, what was your diet like? He, he would probably tell me, uh, well, uh, Bishop, wouldn't, you need to start with uh, a little less fried chicken. That's probably where it would start. <laughs> Give up some of those Snickers Supremes. John got me into those things. Amen. And you might have a little more energy. Say amen. Watch what you eat, saints, because God, God needs some, we need some workers, energetic people who can last. Praise God. We're too young to sleep all the time. Wake up. Work to be done. Make every day count. Am I preaching good? So now... Look at this. They were tent makers. They had the same occupation. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath day and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So he's, he's, in, he's in Corinth. He's in the synagogues. He's reasoning. He's working. And, and he's working because he had to. Because there was not enough money to sustain him. I remember when I was pastoring the lighthouse, we, we went full time at one point, And then we suffered a severe drop off and great persecution. And some left the church and the church was not able to sustain a full time pastor. You know what I did? I got a job. Praise the Lord. I got a job and pastored the church and, 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 and took on another job. I tell you what wasn't going to happen. Pam wasn't going to take on two jobs. Got too much pride for that. It's called being a man. She's not going to do two while I sit there and read the Bible. She come in and work the little finger to the bone. Honey, I was reading in Matthew today. Oh, no, 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 no. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. A man has pride. A man has pride. There's something about the dignity of work. It's wonderful to have to meet, uh, to have to meet uh, an obligation to achieve. I, I, I told the preacher, I said, man, you get a job. You need to work. You're praying and you're holy. But you, that's, Paul, he worked. And there's, there's nothing wrong with secular work if the ministry cannot sustain you. Now, if the ministry gets to where it can, because ministry work is hard work. It's hard work. And it gets to where it can sustain the pastor, and that's different. But if it can't, oh, man, oh, no. You can't, you can't become a beggar, and you can't start borrowing money from the members. No, no, you're dead in the water. You can't walk in funny business with the money. Keep a safe distance between you and that. it. So your name will stay clean. Don't count it. Don't deposit it. Don't handle it. Others do that. That's God's way. See, everything is above board. Praise the Lord. Everything's above board. Amen. And, uh, and, and you go forward. But if, there is, if, if, if the numbers don't sustain you, then, then just ask God for, for a job. So Paul, he, he would make these tents, do this leather work, and he didn't do it because he wanted to, he had to. You know, when, when doing your best doesn't work, you do what's required. You move up a little higher. There's no shame in that. No shame in that. I'm preaching good. There's no shame in that. Amen. As long as it's legal. As long as it's legal. So Paul would go and he would witness in the synagogues. Witness in the synagogues. Working all week and, and uh, go to the Sabbath day. And, uh, but a wonderful thing happened. Verse 5 says, And when Silas and Timothy were come from, here's the place, Macedonia. Here they come. When Silas and Timothy was come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit. That is, Paul was exceedingly encouraged. 
He was glad to see some colleagues. I told you that. He was glad to see colleagues. Thank God for Aquila and Priscilla. But, but he, was, these, uh, he needed some of his familiars. He needed folk who had been with him through the storm and rain and, and who, who had just gone to jail with him. Had a jailhouse rock experience. And here comes Silas and here comes Timothy. And, and I'm going to show you in the scripture that they didn't just show up, but they showed up with an offering from the saints at Philippi. They showed up with a communication from the saints. I'm talking about a divine partnership. Bible says, and he was, he was encouraged. He was encouraged in his spirit. And notice the, the effect that they're coming. And testified to the Jews that Jesus is Christ. One writer said that he literally Double down. He began to preach it even with more fervor and more power and with a greater anointing because the Lord sent him colleagues. I, I'm not going to lie. It does my heart good at that abortion clinic when we're there. And I look over and there's Carl Reeves. Look over there, there's uh, Jerome King, Corey McNeil. Praise the Lord. Melvin Amen. McNeil. Look over at these guys. Anthony Wilson. All these guys. And then I look over at the ladies. Amen. My, my, my. And uh, uh, I, I can't call their names as readily I can call the fellas' name, but the ladies out there. And I know I got some machine guns out there. I ain't. Uh, Sherrod, you know, that's three men right there. Ain't, ain't going to be no fighting today. <laughs> Cause we got the sheriff, see, and uh, all these, all these, all these fighters, praise the Lord, out there, and these machine gun preachers. You know what I know? I don't have to preach all day. I don't have to preach from no nine to eleven. I, I really don't have to preach at all because I got all of these colleagues, like-minded people, standing right there. And they ain't there with their arm folded saying, well, Pastor Wooden, what are you going to do? No, 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 no. They said, I got this. I told them in the 8 o'clock class, I ain't never seen anybody like Carl. Where's Carl? Carl, there he is. Elder Reeves, he, he, he preached like a machine. This guy, you just, you, you just mash a button, say, boop, and man, that's it. He's gone. He will pause so somebody else can. And then when they're finished, he starts right back up. And then I, we, we, we developed a system. I don't want to give it away because they watch us. Hello. They watch us. They really do. They watch us. They, they watch us. They watch us. Praise the Lord. And uh, they, they know where you live. All that. And so, hello. And, and, and uh, we got a signal to, to, to get uh, Brother Reed's attention. And he'll stop. And let some of the rest of us preach. And you know, Jerome King, King is a, he's a, he's a little laid back fella, but he's really not. not that, there's another man in there. And, uh, oh boy, I sure, I, I wouldn't want to fight him. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Cor. Cor McNeil preached so hard the other day, I was standing behind him. I got scared. I'm standing looking at him going, What? I mean, he would, oh God, laying it down for Jesus trying to save unborn babies. And to have these colleagues. I went to a prayer place the other day. There wasn't nobody in there who was of my political persuasion but me. But I had Five men with me, disguised as John Amachuku. When I walked in, he, he was right behind me. I said, ain't nothing going down today. Right. Praise Lord. Walked in, this big fella demoralized the house. Everybody, hey, Pastor Wood. <laughs> oh, yeah, ain't, ain't, ain't going to be no, no, ain't going to be nothing because I got a colleague. I'm not alone. Notice, right. Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. two, by two. There's something about having a colleague. You don't hear my preaching today. That's something about having somebody who's like-minded. 
who believes God, who will pray, who will preach, who will stand their ground. I'm almost through today. The colleagues showed up. My guys showed up. I'll never forget when I was debating a Muslim. I've been in so many debates since I've been in Raleigh. And this was during the Million Man March. Farrakhan had hoodooed most of the brothers. He didn't trick me. History will record that I was not there because a man whose God is not the God of the Bible can't summon me to Washington, D.C. Uh, for a day of atonement. That happened when Jesus died. So we were in this thing. I had to go to the radio station. And, you know, I, I've had so many death threats. So they called and said this and that. And my, my little wife, Pam, and Crystal was small. Patrick was small. And I kissed them goodbye that day. And, you know, I could tell she was a little uneasy. I said, baby, I'm, I'm going to be fine. So I went to the radio station, right? This, this Iman, he was there. You know, they try to intimidate you and all that stuff. And, uh, and, and, see, and, 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 and that, that hat just won't fit. And so I pull up, and I look in yonder's distance, and I see a sea of men. And my brother, with that bad orange and brown combination, it's killing. Looks good on you. I look out. <laughs> you, you got it right. I look out, and I see this sea of men. And I, it was dark, so I couldn't recognize them. I said, oh, Lord. I thought about Pam's concern. I said, well, <laughs> this must be what she was scared about. But I said, I'm going in there. I'm going, I'm going in the radio station. 1550 WCLY. I'm going in. So I get up to walk in. And as I approach the radio station, I look. And lo and behold, the man was from Upper Room. Colleagues. And they said, Pastor. I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest with you now. Y'all ready for this? You go in. Do what you have to do. We got you. I said to myself, it's all right now. I said, it's all right now. I went in there. When I finished with him, the man was screaming on the radio, talking about Farrakhan is God. You know what I said? Need I say more? I, I, I let him finish because if, if he's that crazy, that's what I wanted. He exploded. He lost his mind. And we went on out and got the victory. That was the end of that. But what is my point? My point is, it's something when you link up with people who think like you think. Who think like you think. You're out there. You're out there. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll-free 877 877- 463-3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.